Hey everybody, it's Dan the Get School Dude here once again with another Git tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about preventing repo bloat by installing a pre-commit Git hook that checks for file sizes that are too big and won't let you commit if they are too big. So before we get started today, if you haven't seen my previous videos, there's one in particular that I would consider a prerequisite to this. So if you don't know much about Git hooks and you want to get started, check out this video first because uh, this video we're talking about today will actually build on the content that was in this video. So if you recall from that video, the git hook mechanism was a way to introduce some type of checking action uh, around different git commands. So for example, they are stored under the hidden dot git directory under hooks and every repository has samples as basically examples for how you go about doing some of these git hooks. So for example, today we're going to be using the pre commit hook where we're actually going to evaluate criteria before a commit is made. I have decided that all work will come in under an issue, so I've gone ahead and created a GitLab issue here in our Hello World project for Git School Dude. In order to make a pre-commit hook that's actually going to watch for these large files, like I'd mentioned before, we're actually going to need to inspect the files that are in the index. So instead of writing my own scripting to sort of hack that together, as part of this work, we're actually going to bring in this Git Python module, which is an open source project. We're going to bring this in actually as a sub-module of this project. So now that we got the boring issue stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and crush some code. Okay, done with the coding. Let's show you what I got here. So if you go under the hooks directory, which is new, I now have this committed file limiter script, which is just a Python script that executes the logic that we're talking about here. It's important to note that I am using this external package, git python, and if I were to go up a level and show you this, then you'll see that I have pulled in uh, that as a sub-module under this external directory which I have created. So if you look at git log stat, all this came in in one commit on my topic branch. Here's the sub-module, here's the entry to .git modules, here's the file itself, and I modified this setup repo uh, shell script, which is a one-time script that we run to create some git aliases, which we did in a previous video. So I've added to that to set up the symbolic linking to this file so that it's a one-time action for the developer after they clone, and all the uh, hook updates will update if we ever change this file. So for example, if you look under git hooks, you'll see there's a bunch of sample ones and a couple ones that are moved off to the side, meaning they don't have the exact naming which git hooks needs uh, because we did that stuff in a previous video. But when I run setup repo and I look under there again, we'll see that I now have a new file. And if I do a long listing to see the link, you'll see that it was just created and it's just a symbolic link to this file which is the hook itself. We do this on purpose because now that this link has established over time if I need to modify this like two months from now everyone's repo that has already been set up is pointing to this file which is tracked so we can actually change what the hook does without having to completely remove the hook and copy it in over and over so that's why I've set it up this way. So just for completeness, you can see that in setup repo, we create a symbolic link here, and that's it's one line that sets it up. So if you're interested in the details of this script, feel free to check it out. I'm going to skip all the, the more complicated bits and show you the, the main function here, which if you copy the script and use it in your repo, feel free to do so. This is the area where we can define which files are limited by which size and I've done it by extension so the way you'd read this is that any cpp.cc or .c file can, cannot be bigger than one megabyte same for uh, h files half a meg the pdf doc uh, half a meg so in general you don't want to be committing files like pdf and doc anyway but if you have to this is a great way to limit it so someone doesn't accidentally commit like a 100 megabyte pdf completely ruining your history for all time. So if you implement this in your repo, feel free to add new extensions, change the values. These are just some values that I set up for this demonstration. I don't want this video to be about the code. If you want to see the code, you can see it on gitlab.com. Just know that we import that git submodule here. Now this is a, a Python interface to git, which is super handy. I've used it a lot. I uh, highly recommend it if you're trying to do a lot of git uh, actions inside of Python. 
And just know that within Python, we can instantiate a git.repo, which is what that uh, module is providing. And then we can do git actions very easily in Python. So for example, in order to evaluate what's in the index, we actually get that information with this call right here. So that's all I'm gonna show. What's cool about this particular git hook is that it's very easy to test because all we have to do is run it. Now, the git hook itself will go on to a commit message if this script returns zero, meaning success, and it will it will essentially block a commit if it returns non-zero, and that's a git hook mechanism. So you can see when I run the script, it says looking for files that are too large in the index, all files pass size check, continuing to commit message. So this is the layer that's in between git commit. Now, if we look at git status, and I have an alias for GS, you can see that we're clean, so there's no changes here. So if we were to git commit, nothing's gonna happen because there's nothing to commit. So what we need to do is introduce some changes to test this hook and show you what it does. So I'm gonna use this command, fallocate, to just create a file that's three megabytes in size. I don't care what it is. I don't care what's in it. I just wanna test that this hook works. So when I do this, I have a new file under the source directory called fake file. You can see if I do a long listing dash H on this file, you can see that it's very close to three megabytes. So if I do git status, you can see that it's an untracked file. Uh, git commit won't do anything. We gotta add it to the index. Git add. Git status shows it in the index. Now if I try to commit, I'll show you what happens. So look, it the hook actually evaluates what's in the index looks at its size on disk and then compares it to the values for the limits that we set up. Found an index larger than the limit for extension.cpp. Now this is probably a good time to point out that I forgot to mention I've also created a, a max global limit. So let's say your file doesn't have any extension at all. In fact, let's go ahead and make one without an extension. We'll make this one seven megabytes. Get status shows that it exists. If I get add it to the index and I try to commit now, now it shows I have two files. And it's showing this one's seven, this one's three meg, and this one was flagged as being larger than the limit for the extension CPP, but this one is actually larger than the absolute max of five megabytes. So all of this is tunable in this hook if you want to change these values. You can see right here, absolute max. Uh, equals 5.0. Just to be clear, this isn't just for new files. This will actually apply to existing files as well. So for example, under the source directory, we have a file called box.cpp. This is already tracked. It's been in the repo for a long time. And as you can see, it's very small on disk. So to make this file a lot bigger real quick, I'm just gonna use a Vim macro to copy and paste the whole length of the file, you know, like a thousand times. Now check it out. The file's huge because I copy and pasted it a bunch of times. If I do git status, you can see that change is not staged for commit. And if I attempt to commit, it doesn't complain about it because it's not in the index. But as soon as I add it to the index and then try to commit, you'll see that we get the complaint that uh, the file is too large. Let's go ahead and throw away all this because these were just examples. So let's get reset hard. Head. and now you can see our git status is clean again. So one thing I wanna show you is my de developer laziness. If you search for to do in this file, you will see the way that we evaluate the size of the files in the index is naive here. We're literally just doing a git size on the file itself. But as you may recall, what's in the index is not necessarily what is on disk. So this script has some edge cases that it won't handle correctly. For example, if I look at box.cpp, you can see that it is quite small. If I were to change the file, just to introduce a change, let's say new comment, wrong language. Now if I add the file, and if I were to attempt to commit, which I'm going to attempt here, and I'm not actually going to write the commit, on purpose so that it aborts the commit, but you can see that it ran the check and there were no issues, so it went to continue to the commit message because the size of this file is still very small. Now, if I were to open this file and copy paste a whole bunch of times to make the file big like we did before, we'll see that we've introduced the change and on disk, 
the file is now this big. The file is now 1.5 meg. So the index, the file in the index is small, less than a kilobyte, because all we did was add one comment. But the file on disk is now 1.5 meg. So now if I attempt to git commit, you can see that it's refusing to commit due to file size limits. It's saying, hey, this file is too big. It's about 1.5 meg, which is bigger than the 1. meg limit. But in the index, the file isn't that big. So this is just a naive implementation. You can see this is an edge case here. But in this particular use case, it's an edge case that is kind of rare. It depends on what you're doing. It's rare that someone is going to, to end up making a file a whole lot bigger. And then they're going to, usually what people end up doing is they stage stuff in the index. And right before they're about to commit, they're going to add the content anyway, like this. And then all the content is in the index. So if we tried to git commit now, the message is technically correct because the content's in the index. So I just want to point that out, that there is an edge case or two uh, that this script doesn't handle. And I did that on purpose. I'm not just lazy, guys. I did that on purpose so that as an exercise to the user, if you all want to go out, make a merge request, and fix that for me, I'll merge it in here, and that'd be great. One last thing I want to point out here is that there is a flag that lets you bypass the commit hook. And if you look at git commit, it's called no verify. If I go down the man page, this option bypasses the pre-commit and commit message hooks. So don't tell your developers this if you don't trust them. But you can see that a regular git commit is failing here. But if I do git commit dash dash no verify, it lets me continue. And I can write a commit that shouldn't even exist. Write the commit. Commit is complete. I'm going to purge this commit from the history because I just broke that file. As you can see, if I try to make, everything's broken. Oh my god, why'd I do that? Let's go ahead and back that out by just resetting our branch back to one commit back in history. Hit status. Branch is fine. We no longer have that commit and everything is okay again. Whew. So that's pretty much it today, guys. I just wanted to show you one example of a good pre-commit hook that I think every repo should have. You should limit and have some automatic checking so that people don't accidentally commit huge files. It does happen on accident. It's not just naive developers. It's a combination of both. So I highly recommend. Go ahead and uh, if you don't have something like this, clone down my Hello World repo from this address or obviously find it on GitLab.com and just go to the project and the instructions for to how to clone are there. If you are going to do this, you'll either need to bring in Git Python as a submodule or just take it as a zip file drop. I think the license is permissive of that. I hope you find this helpful. I'm Dan the Git School Dude, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey there, YouTube fans. It's Dan the Git School Dude here. If you're like me, sometimes it can be difficult to learn a new concept just from watching a YouTube video. That's why I've decided to create an entire suite of training programs that can be delivered in person or even remotely. This training really takes things to the next level. We're talking PowerPoints, hands-on exercises, jokes to keep people awake, Q&A, the whole nine yards. If you think your company could benefit from a more formal approach to training, check out continuoustech.net slash training to take a look at the training programs we offer. Thanks for watching.